New eyes and burning hearts. That's the sermon I have for you this morning on the third Sunday of Eastertide where the gospel is the story on the road to Emmaus. New highs and burning hearts. Luke 24 verse 13. That same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. That same day, what day was it? It was Easter, the very first Easter. But these travelers on the Emmaus Road don't know it's Easter. They're living in a world without an Easter. Does that make a difference? Oh, that makes all the difference. These two travelers that we're going to meet are living in a world without an Easter. It says there were two of them, Cleopas and Mary, husband and wife. They are disciples of the prophet from Nazareth. Um, they are, in fact, Relatives of this prophet from Nazareth. They have come to Jerusalem with this prophet they believe in. And it's all gone wrong. Horribly wrong. Terribly wrong. Catastrophically wrong. And now they're just going home. It's a seven-mile walk. It'll seem like 70. Because the road is long when you are carrying a heavy heart. And so Cleopas and Mary on the Emmaus Road going home with broken hearts. And it says they were talking about, discussing what had happened. Well, they were... You know, processing the pain. They didn't want to talk about it, but they had to talk about it. They didn't want to think about it, but they had to think about it. It's like an abscess. It's painful, but you got to get it out. And so, as painful as it is to talk about it, it would have been more painful not to talk about it. And so the two of them, walking home with Shattered dreams and broken hearts. They're talking about what happened. I can almost hear one of them say, what if? There's always that what if. How, it could have been otherwise. It didn't have to be that way. What if Judas didn't do it? What if Caiaphas had done the right thing? What if Pilate had just had a little more courage? But none of that happened. And so they're talking about the things that have happened. And then seemingly out of nowhere, they're joined by a wayfaring stranger. They don't know this man. They've never seen him. This stranger comes up and joins them. They're just... They're walking along, and now there's, instead of two, there's three. A stranger. They're not looking for company. They don't want a stranger to walk with them. But what are you going to do? He's fallen in step with them, and they're not going to be rude and tell him to go away. The stranger is uh, a bit, I don't know what the word is. Curious, maybe? Forward? Because he just asks them. He says, well, I can tell you're discussing something rather intently. Tell me. What are you discussing? Well, they don't really want to talk about it with him, with a stranger. They don't want to share their broken hearts with a stranger. But what choice do they have? Tell me what you're talking about. And they just, they just 
They stood still. They just stopped walking and just stood there looking sad. And finally, Cleopas said, Are you the only person who doesn't know about these things? The stranger says, What things? The things about Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, tell me about him. Well, he, he was a mighty prophet. He was mighty in word and deed. Oh, was he? Yes, he, he worked miracles. Well, what kind of miracles? Well, he, he healed the sick. He, he caused the blind to see and the deaf to hear, the lame to walk. He even raised the dead. Oh, he raised the dead, did he? Hmm. What else? Well, yeah, he was a preacher. What did he preach? Well, he preached that God's kingdom was right at the door, right at hand. That the kingdom was coming right now, that any moment... That the kingdom from heaven was going to come to earth. And that because of that we needed to start rethinking everything. We needed to think in a new way because the kingdom from heaven was coming into the world right now. He came to Jerusalem to become king. And we came with him. It was a week ago today, I remember. We were all shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is the king. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And we waved our palms and we shouted, Hosanna. He came to Jerusalem to become our king and to bring the kingdom of God. But one of his disciples betrayed him. They arrested him in the middle of the night. The Sanhedrin put him on trial and said he was a blasphemer and they condemned him. They took him to the governor, Pontius Pilate. Pilate knew he was innocent. But still he condemned him and they crucified him. That was on Friday. You know, the reason we're so sad is because we really hoped, we really hoped that he was the Messiah, that he was the Christ, that he was the King. We really hoped that he was the one that the prophet so long ago foretold and that at last what the prophet said was going to come to pass. We really hoped that he was the one. And today's the third day since this happened. Oh, the third day. Yeah, today's the third day. You two fools. <laughs> you two fools. It's all in the prophets. Haven't you ever read them? I mean, let's start with Moses. Moses is sent by God. What happens? Pharaoh tries to kill him. But they find him in that little basket. Bring him out. Did Israel accept Moses? No, they rejected him and they rebelled against him. But still God brought about his purposes. Same with all the prophets. Well, think about Jonah. Got swallowed by that fish. Was in the belly of the whale for what? One, two, three days. But on the third day, he got out. And didn't Isaiah say something that the Messiah would in fact also be a suffering servant? Didn't, didn't Isaiah say that Messiah would be spit upon and beaten? Didn't Isaiah say that he would be a lamb 
led to the slaughter. Have you ever said goodbye to a hero? Have you ever had to lay away your dreams? Have you ever been so lonely that a stranger's your best friend? Then you'll know what I mean. Those are lyrics from a song by Jason Upton that I absolutely love. It's called Road to Emmaus. It's a song about these two fools, as they're called, on the road to Emmaus. Have you ever said goodbye to a hero? That's what they've done. Have you ever had to lay away your dreams? That's what they've had to do. Have you ever been so lonely that a stranger's your best friend? This stranger that has joined them. Have you ever been so lonely that a stranger's your best friend? Then you'll know what I mean. Well, on the third Sunday of Eastertide, I knew I would preach on the road to Emmaus. And I thought about this song Jason Upton is a dear friend, and so I called him up. And I said, hey, Jason, why don't you join us? Why don't you sing for us? And, uh, you know, Jason and Rachel, they live, they live in an old farmhouse just outside of Milwaukee, and I love them dearly. They're beautiful, wonderful people. And so uh, I've asked Jason to join us and sing The Road to Emmaus for us. Jason? Hey, Brian, Perry. Word of life.
restricted by the holiness Have you ever thrown your dollar with disgust? Have you ever thought the great commissions just too great a cause? This is our way to live on Our American dream Two fools on the road to a mess Where the mind is well be Might as well be you and me Then might as well be you and me Oh, then might as well be you Might as well be you and me. Thank you, Jason. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? Cleopas and Mary now have new eyes and burning hearts. With their new eyes, they recognize the stranger was Jesus all along. As they were broken hearted at the loss of Jesus, <laughs> Jesus was with them the whole time. But they had to have new eyes to see Him. And because they can now see Jesus in a new way with new eyes, well... They see Jesus now everywhere. They see Him in the Scriptures. They see Him in the bread. They see Him in strangers. And their hearts are filled with blazing love. New eyes and burning hearts. And so they have to rush all the way back to Jerusalem. Yeah, it's already night. It's seven miles back, but it doesn't matter. They have to rush back to Jerusalem to tell their friends the good news. Cleopas and Mary almost missed Easter because they had wrong messianic expectations. Cleopas and Mary almost missed Easter because they had wrong ideas about what Jesus was supposed to do. Cleopas and Mary were depressed when they should have been full of joy. All because they had a wrong paradigm about how the kingdom of God comes. A lot of people did. Maybe everybody did. Nicodemus had a hard time seeing it. John the Baptist really didn't get it. Even Mary, Jesus' mother, seems like she didn't really get it. Joseph and Cleopas, or, or Cleopas and Mary, they had a wrong expectation about 
about how the kingdom of God comes. And so they were depressed and they thought all was lost when they should have been full with joy because everything had been won. They expected the kingdom of Messiah, the kingdom of the Christ, the kingdom of God to come really in the same way that all the other kingdoms come. Out of the kingdoms come. Well, at some point, there's a war. There's a battle. People get killed. They expected Jesus to eventually launch a battle and take care of the problem of the bad guys. You know, you're going to have to Going to have to deal with Caiaphas, going to have to deal with Pilate, going to have to deal with those Romans. How can anything change if we're not going to kill the bad guys? That's what they expect. They expected the means to be the same, but the end to be different. Why? Because we're the good guys. <laughs> that's, how, that's how it works. Well, you know, you shouldn't go and kill people, but, you know, if they're the bad guys and we're the good guys, well, then, you know... Uh, it'll, it'll work out because the end will justify the means. That's a lie. Here's the truth. The means are the end in the process of becoming. If the means are killing, the end is death. There's no way around it and nothing ever changes that way. If the means are power over other people to make them do what you want them to do, then the end is going to be just another political party. As if a political party is going to save the world. Come on now. The church that Jesus Christ is building is not a political party. The church is to be the alternative society. God's alternative society. The church is not so much trying to change the world. We get in trouble when we talk like that. We're going to change the world. We're going to change the world. We're going to change the world. And the first thing we want to do is win an election and have power and do it that way. And we think that the end, because our ends are always good, right? We'll justify whatever means, however mean we have to be in our means because we have a good end. No, no, the church is not tasked with, with changing the world. It's enough that we simply be the world already changed by Christ. Just live it out right now. Be the people of life and love and faith and hope and grace and mercy. Just be that people and let the world be changed as it will be changed. Just be a city set upon a hill. Just be salt and light. Just be that. If we're not the world already changed by Christ, then we can never change the world. Well, Cleopas and Mary were depressed because they thought their cause had lost. Right? They came to Jerusalem so that there could be a new king and a new kingdom and a new way of doing things on the earth. And they thought that their cause had lost. But in fact, their cause had already won. Already won. Because Christ is raised from the dead. And if Christ is raised from the dead, in the end, everything is going to be all right. Do I, do I sound like a lunatic? <laughs> do I sound like uh, someone who is just filled with pipe dreams? No, I sound like a believer. I sound like a Christian. I sound like someone who actually believes the gospel. Everything is going to be all right because Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead. The early Christians, those first centuries of Christians, those early Christians... They didn't fight to win because they believed they already had the victory. They already had it. That's what Paul says at the end of his great treatise on resurrection in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, thanks be to God who gives us the victory 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. But you have to have new eyes. Easter eyes. Born again eyes. To see it. Sixteen years ago I was born again again. When I began to see the kingdom of Christ for what it really is. And I would tell people all the time, I have new eyes. I had new eyes and a new Bible. It was the same Bible I'd had all my life. But no, I had a new Bible. Because I could see it in a new way. Just like after Jesus talks to Cleopas and Mary, they have a new Bible. They can see that ultimately it's all about Jesus who is the Savior who is going to rescue us and redeem us and we already have the guarantee because He's been raised from the dead and death is defeated. If we don't see Jesus through Easter eyes, we'll spend much of our life needlessly disappointed. If we think that the kingdom of God, the will of God, the purposes of God come by winning and gaining political power, most of the time we'll be angry, frustrated, depressed, with loveless hearts as cold as ice. The kingdom of God doesn't come by winning and it's not found in the halls of power. The kingdom of God comes by death and resurrection and it's found at the communion table. This is the table. Not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love Him and for those who want to love Him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who have not been here long. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come. Because it is the Lord who invites you. It is His will that those who want Him should meet Him here.